Kitchen's open, y'all. If you haven't said hi before, I'm Dina. Folks day over here in the chat, or maybe it's down here, depending on how y'all have it all set up. That's the counterculture. If you've never said hi, go ahead and jump in there. Say hello to us. Uh, that's the counterculture, and they will give you a super warm welcome. And you know what else is super today? Is we have Kali Alexander up in the house. Um, my friend Kali is a, a yoga instructor and a retreat leader. She's got uh, a heck of a lot going on these days, uh, especially a fabulous, fabulous uh, retreat, yoga retreat coming up in Bali in July, 2023. So you should definitely go check out her site. Um, I'll drop the link real quick here. A fabulous, fabulous uh, retreat, yoga retreat coming up in Bali in July, 2023. So, so Kali, you want to introduce yourself? I think I'm getting your audio. Oh, hi. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hey there. Thank you so much for having me, Dina. You know, it's so cool to be able to talk about one of my favorite things to eat. <laughs> I am hearing myself in double, so pardon me for the, the bit of delay here. But yes, I'm here and I'm live. So I'm looking forward to having a really great time. And I think that my mom may actually be tuned in, which would be really great because we'll get a chance to hear from her and she will have her input on some hot water cornbread. I am excited to, to get jumping in on this. Um, tonight we are making, let's see here. I can't see my buttons all of a sudden. Tonight's cocktail is a cherry or something cherry because uh, Kali, you asked me, well, how about you make something cherry? So that, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, let me grab my glass and my ice and we'll get started. Actually, you know, I, I, I have been messing up this line <laughs> over and over and over again. It is tonight we are cooking fried cabbage and hot water cornbread, but first a cocktail. So let's check out this cocktail action here. I've got uh, my chilled glass and this is the, um, the cherries that were left over from that I strained out of the infused and I'm just going to run them through and then I'm going to go into some super fine sugar here or ultra fine I think is what they're calling it these days just to rim the glass And you could make this with bourbon, you could make it with uh, vodka, what, you name it. All right, so I'm gonna add the rum. So this is my, my pureed, or my uh, infused rum that I, I put some black cherries into earlier today. And then we've got tablespoon of limeade. You could also do lime and some simple syrup if you didn't have any limeade on hand. And then I like to have some granulated sugar. Um, it's just for some reason when I'm drinking out of a straw and I get a little hit of that granulated sugar, it makes me very happy. So that's what I'm having there. And we'll stir it up. Can I just say that frosted glass is everything. Oh, frosted glasses are where it's out, sis. I'm telling oh. you, I, I just throw them in the in the the freezer, and you know they're good to go. It's nice for a beer, oh. and you know me in presentation as I splash limeade everywhere. <laughs> Look at that. You know my request for the the cherry themed drink. 
it's uh, very nostalgic for me because I, I think of this time of year when we were little kids, we would spend our summers in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, and being able to have like that cherry Coke <laughs> was everything. <laughs> now, was that the uh, the the canned cherry Coke, the pre-made, or was that oh, baby um, girl. that somebody made it a cherry Coke, Coke and carry? Yeah, so you could, you know, it's both ways. One is getting the, the Coke, but no cans, of course, in the bottle. Well, yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> and well, then yeah, we're both the, old enough to know better than that. <laughs> and, the, and the cherry syrup. <laughs> nice, nice. You know, so there's a, a restaurant that we used to go to when we were kids. It was called Fuddruckers, and I believe it's still around. Uh, I oh, just yeah. saw an article about it. They were like, oh, Fuddruckers, now a completely 100% Black-owned company. I was like, whoa, it's still around? But they make cherry sodas, at least they used to, the real deal with the syrup and everything. And this is looking like cherry soda. I was talking to my mom earlier today about how her cherries have been this season. And she was like, oh, they've been really good. My brother took some over to her and she was saying that she's actually inspired to make a cherry pie. Now, knock on wood, <laughs> she will actually do that. <laughs> My mom and cooking, they, they fell off once we became adults. <laughs> once she didn't have to do it anymore? Once she didn't have to do it anymore. And you know, you know that's like, okay, oh, I, right? I mean, I guess, I guess. You know, I go over there on Sundays and I'd be like, you got my daddy over here starving. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got my, um, my money shot. Thank you for that. Um, let's, let's try it. I just kind of, you said cherry, I said, okay. Um, so, so compliant. <laughs> well, you know, I try to be a nice hostess. There we go. I'm trying to mix it up a little bit, but I got it a little. So bit. pretty. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at this. Oh, this is good. Ooh. Trying to mix it up a little bit more. I feel it. I feel it up on here. <laughs> oh, that's nice and refreshing. I mean, that that is. Yes. Oh. Hmm. oh. You know, right. we gotta, this virtual TV thing has got to improve because I need to be able to feel <laughs> the way that goes down the throat. I need to be able to taste that against the palate. Do, do I need to put the microphone right up against my, my throat here so you can hear it? Um, yeah, that would be great. Let's see here. Let's see who's here. I need the immersive experience. <laughs> Happy Thursday, Mary Nicole. Thank you for uh, coming in. I'm going to try to move these chats over. There we go. Elaine, it's nice to see you on this Happy Thursday. Elaine, did you do your jumping jacks today? Someone just called you out, Elaine. <laughs> Let's hear it. Come on. Uh, Tori, thanks for jumping in. Mary Nicole is saying hello. Um, I believe we have Kali's mama on here. Or is that your sister? Who's Sina? that? Sina? Alexander? Aww. Or is that your, your daughter? I don't That's know who that my is. cupcake. That's my daughter. Well, hello. Thanks for joining us. But they do uh, share a name. My mom and my daughter, they, they share a name. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Um, here is the link to Kali's website if you're interested in anything yoga or Bali. Either way, right? Yeah. Yeah, come through B Bali yeah. 2023, July, summer of 2023. Mark your calendars for two weeks of just amazingness. <laughs> so what kind of things do you do on that retreat? Besides, you know, I mean, I, I know you do yoga. We, we do yoga, but it's honestly, it's a small part of what we do. We kind of gather in the name of yoga, but it's, I call it the awakened adventure. So we spend time exploring the island of Bali. We go to two different locations. The first venue is in the forest. It's the hinterland. It's the, the cultural hub of Bali is called Ibud. And then about midway through, about six days in, we go to 
the coast and have a different experience. And I used to spend all of the time for the retreat in Abood, and then I would take my personal time after the retreat was over, going to the beach. And then one, and I've been doing this for a few years, and the last time I did it, I did just the forest retreat. I said, man, you know, it'd be nice if I can have my retreat goers experience both. And I was like, wait, wait a minute, hold up. I can, it's my retreat. And so ever since then, I've been doing those two locations and it's been amazing. So we do things like whitewater rafting, we do a purification ceremony, we do all types of wonderful things. And I kind of like to keep it a secret because I really like to use the idea of adventure and just kind of being open to what could happen. So it's a very full experience. If you're interested, there's lots of pictures on my website. If you go to chocolatewishyoga.com, you'll click the link for Bali 2023. There's pictures and they'll give you a great window into to what to expect. It's gonna be fantastic. Very cool, very cool. Thank you for sharing that. I'm gonna quickly go through the rest of these, uh, what do you call these things, chat. All right, yeah, that frosted glass, I'm telling you, it's a nice touch. Okay, oh, Keely, thank you for coming in. Thank you. I thought you were hey, uh, you're gonna be in bed and I know how much you've been doing this week, so I really appreciate you being here. Um, Elaine's having a cherry Coke. Elaine's having a cherry Coke. That, that's good timing. Um, Mary Nicole uh, and I were chatting a little bit right before we went live and she was trying trying to make something similar using bourbon. Um, I forgot to tell her that I was using white white rum instead of brown, and I think it might make a difference. So sorry, mm. Mel, my bad. I wouldn't mind comparing. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I actually did infu infuse some vodka, so I've got plenty of options. Um, and the bourbon, I think, would be really good. Excuse me. I think so. I mean, the vodka sounds really good to me. But I, I wouldn't complain. I mean, cherries just make everything better. I dropped some onion on the ground. I don't want the dogs getting that. Okay, so what am I doing? I am chopping, chopping. Hey, oh where'd you go? I can't see you. I'm here now. Can you see me here? There you is. There I am. Sorry. Uh, okay, Elaine says she's been doing her jumping jacks. Good job, Elaine. And hey, Hannah, it's good to see you. Yeah, Mary Nicole, I'm thinking we might need to um, to check out some Bali action. All right. Um, oh, hey, nice to see you, Kathy. Thanks for joining us. All right, one more time for anybody who came in late. We are making fried cabbage and hot water cornbread. I've got the oil heating up right now over here. We're gonna start cabbage here. And um, fun fact, I've never made either. I mean, I've cooked cabbage before and I've cooked cornbread before, but I've never done this. So uh, that's the fun thing about the At The Counter series is I get to actually uh, take a little direction from somebody else who's who's had the dish before and um, I want to kick off with, hey, Kali, why hot water cornbread? Why was that your choice? Why hot water cornbread? Well, it's a different way of having cornbread, right? Instead of like, you know, put it in the, in the, the, the cast iron skillet and, and put it in the oven. The thing about cornbread is that traditionally it has milk in it. And the reason why hot water cornbread is such a favorite of mine is because it works for everybody in our family. So whether you are a carnivore or omnivore, I should say, or you're vegan, you can still enjoy hot water cornbread because there's no dairy. Also, it's super quick to make. It's a great hand food. It doesn't crumble in the same way that cornbread does. It's fantastic. It can be eaten alone. You can use it with anything that has a gravy or a pot liquor. It is one of my absolute favorite things to, me, to make and eat and also, it is super inexpensive. It's something that my daughter can make, something that my father likes to make. We all know how to prepare it. It is just a favorite thing. I see that you're cutting up the onions, and I know that you're going to use that for the cabbage. But sometimes, if I have 
like some remaining scallions, maybe from a dish that I made previously, maybe I made tacos, you know, the day before, a couple days before, if I have some remaining onions, whether they're like the scallions or whether they're like red onions, I put those in the cornbread as well. And it's just delicious. It's a great savory treat. Now I'm a savory cornbread person. You know, some folks like to have it sweet, but I'm all about that savory. I'm, I'm, I'm all about fat and salt myself. So I, I can, I can be down with, I can be down with that savory thing. All right. Um, so we're going to use some onion and some red bell pepper. And then I think you said I need some thyme, right? Oh yes. For cabbage, thyme is a must. It is a I must. I don't have That's fresh so thyme, pretty. but I've got some dried thyme right here. And I know y'all think I'm crazy for having all this stuff hanging from the, the ceilings, but I love food hanging from the ceiling. I do too. I do too. Now, how did you cut that onion without crying? Um, sharp knife, go fast. I mean, okay, maybe my knife isn't sharp enough because I think I cut fast That might enough. be it. That might be it. Um, one of the uh, the nice things about being in the uh, the I groom a dog from time to time space is I have a lot of scissors and a lot of scissors need a lot of sharpening and I've got a guy. So mm -hmm. um, I when we go see him, I take dog sh shears and I take um, my knives with me. Right. So God right. forbid my luggage ever get lost right before a stream. <laughs> Ciao. All right. Um, mm. I've got so this going on. Um, this is on medium low. Let's go ahead and throw in the uh, the onions and the peppers. You know, the farmer's market that I used to go to, they had someone that was sharpen knives and it's so interesting because farmer's market is one of the things that I haven't returned to since, you know, this new world. But mm -hmm. I, I do miss farmer's market for that reason. You just go and get your knives sharpened. And to be honest with you, I haven't had my knives sharpened since then. Oh, dang. It's a crime. That's, that's a really long time. <laughs> that's a really long time. It's a long right, time. We've got our bell pepper. And while that's <laughs> starting to, to kick it up, I'm going to um, quickly run through the uh, chat, see if there's anything we've missed, and then I'm going to get chopping on this, uh, this cabbage. You know, and I usually do my bell peppers in strips, but that totally works as well. Oh, of course. Yeah, that makes sense. Strips makes a lot of sense. I don't know why I didn't do that, because <laughs> I didn't know better. Um, Keely's saying that uh, you're the one that uh, inspired her to do her morning walks. So she's really, for that. oh yes, yeah. yes, 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 with uh, yeah. with with Rick. Apparently, I have just screwed up chats. One moment, please. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Oops. She's in there. She's out of there. She's in there. She's out of there. Hey, you know, I thought we were going to be light on, on who was going to make it today, but look who's in the house. Hey, Michelle, thanks for coming. Hi, Michelle. We got no time. Yes, I see this. All right, all right. Um, I'm not sure what we're brilliant about. If it's Kali or me, either way, we'll take it. Thank you. All right. Um, let me check this real quick. Where is my spurtle? Here it is. Making sure y'all are awake with that crash bam boom. Now, do I add the thyme this early or do I wait? I like to saute everything up first. Okay. Uh, when I say everything, I like to saute what you have in the pan first, the bell pepper. And then, okay. The onion. You know, get that a little soft and then start to add in the other stuff. Now, are you adding carrots to this? I have no carrots. They're not ready. Okay, so cool. So then after this is kind of soft a little bit, then I add in the, the garlic, the pepper, the salt. Oh, garlic, that's it. 
I forgot the garlic. It's sitting right here, too. Oh, yeah. Look how pretty that is. So I harvested garlic this week. Um, I think it was Saturday. Yeah, so harvested garlic on Saturday. This is what I'm working with here is my last year crop. But um, let me show you real quick what that looked like. There's uh, the garlic that I pulled up on Saturday this week. Mm -hmm. I guess that would be pretty. last week. There's five varieties, um, about a hundred heads, I think, in the end. You look so, like you're on your way to the farmer's market to sell that. I ain't selling a ding lick of it. That's mine. <laughs> That's a gorgeous picture. Is that on your Thank Insta? You. Uh, no, I didn't put it on Insta. Not yet, at least. Yeah, it's just so country to see vegetables in the bed and the 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 bed of a truck like that. <laughs> it is kind of country, isn't it? It's country, it's country, and country is a good thing. Yeah, no, I, I get you. So, you didn't grow up in Alabama, but you visited there in the summers. Is that right? Nope, it was Arkansas. Yeah, Arkansas, so my, our, my bad. We would uh, drive from LA to Arkansas every summer. Wow, and spend our summers there. That's something that we don't do anymore. Is we don't do it anymore. Spend we summers do it somewhere anymore. else. You know, and the thing is, and I and I actually miss that it kind of stopped with, with my generation. You know, like my father, my mother's family has been I feel like we came out of the soil. My mother's side of the family came out of the soil of, of Los Angeles. My father's family is from uh, Arkansas, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And so you know, my mother was like, you know, the city mouse. And so we would go back to Arkansas every summer. And now that that the next generation, like I don't take my kids to Arkansas. They, in fact, they've never even been. And you know, is that just that? because you've lost the people that were there or? The business is it our life. generation. Different generation, you know. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was thinking is, you know, we don't go places for the summer anymore. I mean, yeah. my family never did for an entire summer, um, but I know people who used to be gone all summer long. And that's just, you don't hear about that anymore. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you say that because I'm, I'm looking desperately to change that for, for our family. So we were in conversation, family conversation today about like, look, let's make, make plans for the summer. like. For the next summer, let's all do this, you know? We re recently reconnected with a family member. Now, trip this out. I have a an aunt who adopted me several years ago, and she became, like, an amazing confidant of mine. And whenever I would have things that I would just kind of need to talk through and to get some advice and perspective, she and my mother were, like, two of the people that I would often go to, right? We lost her during this pandemic. She, this aunt of mine, she was known for like adopting people. Like she adopted a brother. She didn't have any biological family. So she would adopt us. She would have nieces and nephews and brothers and sisters that she would adopt. So she adopted a brother, his name was Richard, right? And so when my aunt passed away, we became Facebook friends. And he sent me a, uh, when he sent me a friend request, I immediately screamed, Dina we are actually biologically related. And I saw his last name, his last name is Teams. That's my family last name. My mom always said, look, if you ever meet anybody whose last name is Teams, trust and believe they are your relation, they are related to you. And I found out oh, this wow. person that my aunt, my aunt brought us together. We did not know that we were biologically related, related until after she passed. So. Wow. And she was a in. quote aunt? She was an aunt, yes. Okay, I'm sorry to have interrupted you. I apologize. Just wanted to get that. No, piece. it's all good. It's all good. So I'm just delighted now to like have like this growing family of people. And I've tripped this out because all of these things have happened uh, since the pandemic. And I love that this is one of the positive things that has happened. My, my daughter's favorite teacher in high school found out that he's one of our cousins too. So oh, dang. I bring all this up because like, 
the thing about the hot water cornbread, it's a family tradition, right? And so we all still have maintained that tradition, even though that we've been separated, that is still something that we have in common, you know? So family is really special. And I'm looking to like take us all, all of us to go on a trip. We all may be going to Bali next year, the cousins that we just found. So I, I'm looking forward to it. That's a really cool story, Holly. Thank you. That, that it, it's neat when you find people. Um, it is. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to share one with you here after I talk about this thing. Um, Kali and I have been talking about what I was going to cook for days. <laughs> she got tired of me asking. She, what should I? One o'clock today, we landed on, go get some cabbage out of the garden. So this guy is little and it's the first one that I've pulled up. He's got a cone head, but, um, and he's leaking. Um, so... I don't know what's gonna what it's gonna be like in there, but we're gonna give it a go. It's so tender and pretty. It is, and I mean it's only been in the house for what three, four hours now. So actually, I better cut it this way first. And it's the perfect size for just me. Right. Looks good. Looks really good. You know, you that homegrown cabbage, you always worry about who you might be bringing in. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, look at all that. And so do you eat the core? My dogs love the core. Your dogs eat the core. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I might do it on this one because it's so fresh and, you yeah. know, it's a small one, but they really like the core. So I'll, uh, I'll chop that up for them later, probably. Yeah. What my mom would do with this is that she would cut the core out. Once she put the, the cabbage in the, in the pan, she then sawed up the core and eat that. And she just eat it raw? Yeah. See, and I have a feeling she's watching, but she would never say anything in the chat. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Mommy, I know you there. <laughs> this looks really good. I'm. It does. I'm excited about this cabbage. And do you think I should do the whole thing or just half? I think you should do the whole thing. Okay. Unless you have other plans, like if you wanna I, but I would do the whole thing, though. Girl, there are 12, well, now 11 cabbages out there. I think I can, I can sacrifice this whole one. <laughs> you know, for as much, you know, onions and stuff that you have. True, true, true. Yeah, this thing is so tender that pulling the core out was nothing. I, I don't think I've ever had a cabbage this fresh. I mean, I've, I've grown them before, but I've brought them in and had them sit for a couple days before I actually ate them. Right. So I got to the point where I'm afraid that my, my fingers are at jeopardy here, and we all know that I'm not immune to yeah, being please, cut. Please, please. Please so, don't cut off the finger. Oh, I'm sorry. Especially I thought I was on the, on the stream that I'm on. I don't want to okay. be known as the girl who was on the stream when Dina cut her finger off. <laughs> so I got to the end and it's too small for me to try to, to cut this way. <laughs> so all I'm doing is I'm just flipping it down and uh -huh. give myself some room. All right. That's it. So um, I think we're going to have to do this in two small shifts. Yeah, so you put it in, let the, 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 the steam cover it, let the steam wilt it down some, and then put in some, another handful or so. It's what we call fried cabbage. Oh yeah, that's, 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 um, if you had another head of cabbage, I would say even do that one. <laughs> yep, we, I, I pulled one. 
This is plenty then. Yeah. So there's enough there for me to. Yeah. So so that that Maybe looks good. More. And one thing I did was. Um... Now now hold on a second. Yes, ma'am. What are you putting in the salt and the pepper? Now. The time? Now. Okay. Do that. Uh... <laughs> Right now, right, right now. And you got you got the heat on that uh, hot water cornbread oil, right? Yep. It's at low right now, but I can smell it. I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit. Actually, no, I'm gonna leave it at low because we're gonna slide. We're gonna swap these two, and then. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yep, makes sense. Yeah, and I've got my time here. Now, let me ask, is this typically when you season? Uh, yeah, put, yeah, that's pretty. And sometimes I just drop the whole sprig in, especially if it's fresh. Oh, I get I love sticks in my mouth. Like that. Do you typically season your food this way? I usually season during the saute period. I season, um, well, I always forget salt and pepper. That's my thing. <laughs> okay. I ain't gonna lie. Sherry's always having to remind me to salt and pepper thing. All right, so I've got this, on, I've got this on medium low. I'm gonna put a lid on it. I go find a lid. So I, I would typically put the herbs in, um, I don't know, let's pretend that this was, this was just one shift and I wasn't going to do another shift. Um, I probably would have put them in when I put the veggies in. So mm -hmm. in my mind, that would be after this stuff that I'm playing with right now. But because we're doing two shifts, I think it makes sense to put it in now. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to give that a second to wilt while I uh, say hi to people. See what's going on. Hey, Michael Corey. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Michael Corey. Um, Michael Corey is um, the, uh, I don't want to say better half, but pretty darn close to better half of the Sherry Kennedy. Oh, so, um, thanks for jumping Michael on. Corey? Um, thanks, friend. I like my harvest. Cool profile and, pic. Mm, okay, you know, I'm sorry. My my thing is not set up for for the long stuff. Uh, Keely's saying I think Kali is telling Dina to put that garlic shot on IG, but maybe I don't understand subtle signals. Um, apparently, I don't understand <laughs> subtle signals. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for for that help. It always helps to have a Pacific Northwest kind of uh, translator. So thank you. Sherry's here too. She goes, hold up. It's not just Michael here. I'm here too. Hello. Oh, there she is. Okay. I, I'm not done yet. Yes. Stories of connection. They're fantastic. I didn't, and that was wonderful to hear that you uh, met a family member through a quote unquote family member that that's something else uh, uh, yeah met a family chills. member through a family member yeah yes this whole thing you're right uh principal walker is going to be barely a serving i agree but it's a dina size serving um yeah it, it's it's going to be perfect for for my house and my housemates here all right did you say in your housemates? Is that what you just said? Yeah, they're around here somewhere. <laughs> We're both here, Peeper and Parker? Okay, I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> I know who Peeper and Parker are. Is that an inside joke? Who are Peeper and um, Parker? Peeper and Parker are um, some of my favorite Bichons in, in, of all time. And they, they both passed in the last couple of years. So, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, speaking of connections, 
cool that Callie actually knows you y'all know Callie you know Callie people I'm sorry you're gonna have to help me with this one yeah so I don't know how we even found this out it was probably on social media or something um I know two of of uh Principal Walker's cousins uh and I know them quite well especially Kari Kari is actually he, he is an amazing uh, baker like he can make there is this this vegan avocado cheesecake that he makes that is mwah, amazing vegan avocado cheesecake yes ma'am I'm, yes, ma I'm coming at that I'm coming at that 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 sounds real good mm. and, so, and her her other cousin is is also in education as well and I believe that our children went to school with each other for a minute there. Yeah, I think, yeah. In fact, they went to elementary school for a while together. Wow. Her kids are a little bit older than mine. Oh, there you go. Yes. Stand up. So, um, I grew up in Eastern Washington and my Mother and father were one day at the commissary, I don't know, 50 miles away from where we lived. And they were shopping and mom's Filipino. And you know, as you would have it at any military base in the United States, you're gonna come across a Filipino. So mom's shopping and this woman says hi and they start conversing in Tagalog and you know, it's nice to meet you, that kind of thing. And off they go their separate <laughs> ways. And a few aisles later, they cross paths again. And the woman asked my mom, she said, or she, she told my mom, she goes, your voice reminds me of my mother's voice. And mom was being polite and she said, wow, okay. You know, I, mean, I don't know what you say to that, right? Yeah. Right? And a little bit later, they cross paths again. And the woman said, what's your mom's name? And mom goes, mama, right? And it turned out that they were cousins and, oh. and there were periods, I mean, we, we, um, where you just send your children to different places. Kind of like we used to go away for the summer. They uh -huh. used to swap kids around, you know? And, uh, so yeah, mom found her cousin Jane that she hadn't seen in all these years. What's up with that? I love that. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, and so far from where they had started, too. You know, it was just kind of trippy that way. It is. I mean, because right. now they were in the same place. They actually spoke to each other. And then on the second interaction, she actually said, I got to ask her mom her name, you know? Yep. Yep. I got to ask who she is. That or is at least say you remind me of my way. mother. I beg your pardon? That is very nicely shredded, that cabbage. Why, thank you. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap burners here because I think y'all are gonna want a front row seat to watching the cornbread do its thing. And this is mm -hmm. just gonna be a, a little matter of a And just because sizzle. I feel like it needs more salt and pepper. Okay, I feel like I should that say that quick. to you. And you know, that I think is gonna become a thing. Anybody who wants to tell me it needs more salt and pepper may certainly do so. Yeah, and I would kind of pick that, 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 that cabbage up and put it closer to the, the veggies at the bottom and that oil. I think my oil is all soaked up. Should I put some more? Uh, is it sticking? It doesn't look like it's sticking, is it? It's not sticking. I also have some stock on hand. The stock it's will help, especially if it's, you know has some salt in it, as long as it's not a sodium-free stock. It does put a little not bit of that on there, in thing. there. So it's about... Um, a cup. Oh, okay. I would just pour a little bit in there. Maybe half okay. a cup. Maybe a third of a cup. Mmm. So, right. um, this is chicken stock that I made last summer. Oh yeah, you can even put more than you can even put more than that in there. Cuz what you showed me was a was a full cup, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, get get like a third so, and a half a cup in there. Get like a third and a half of that. Yeah, a little bit more. Okay. A little bit more. Okay. Mm-hmm, that looks good. And we're just gonna let this kind of beautiful mother itself, huh? Just beautiful. So I am gonna move this to the back burner-ish for a minute. Grab my pot holders and I'm gonna move the oil that has been heating up over here to over here. And then this guy. And I'm gonna continue on maybe medium low. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Medium low is this good. Up. I'm going to bring the heat on this oil up. And we're going to start uh, mixing up the, the cornbread. You know, I love that you're doing these, these, these uh, episodes that are cost-effective. A dollar eighty-three a serving. You can get you cabbage and cornbread. <laughs> Um, you know, when I was out on surgery from, from surgery, I started getting worried that I was going to feel the pinch. And then I realized, wow, you know, if I'm feeling this, I know other people got to be feeling this. Right. And why not, why not do something that can really help the community? So right. thank you for that feedback. All right. So the next part is the cornbread part and we're going to use a cup of cornmeal. Ooh, I should have had that water bowl in one sec. Yeah. Cornmeal. Get that water hot. Yep. One cup. This is a quarter cup of all purpose flour. And you told me to have a little extra on hand, which I didn't do so let's go fix that no quick. that that is actually plenty i would wouldn't even use the whole amount of that i would just leave a little of that on hand that you have oh okay put this back yeah typically for like a a, a cup of cornmeal just like two healthy tablespoons of of the flour could work there you go you got everything you need right there. Right here, yeah. So the theory behind this, from what I understand, is that you mix these three things together and the, the boiling water starts to cook the cornstarch. Mm -hmm. So it softens, I mean cornstarch, excuse me, cornmeal. So it starts Absolutely. to soften everything. Um, and then it's cooking already before you even put it in the oil. Yep. And um, the videos that I watched, I love that I can admit that I'm watching videos on how to do how to cook something, because I've never done this before, so it makes me really happy. Um, the videos that I watched, some people made it by hand, some people just yeah. used the back of their spoon. Where are you on that? Interesting, I use my hands. I totally use my hands. I try to use the spoon when I first learned how to make it, and I never was really good. My mother is like super good at being able to use a spoon and she doesn't get her hands all into that mess. And I was talking to her about it and she was like, no, nah, I just use a spoon. And she was like, yeah, I guess you could. And it's interesting because yeah, I guess you can use the cold water with your hands sink. And I'm like, you've seen me make this hot water cornbread. I never knew anything about the cold water and whatever it's supposed to do. But yeah, she just uses her spoon and just slides it in there into the, the okay. hot oil. And you make the patty. And you I make the, patty. With the hot dough. With the hot dough, mm -hmm. okay. And one of the ladies that I watched makes the patty, but she she dips her fingers in cold water first, and then she grabs it and and forms it. And I think yeah. that that just makes it so it's cold, cool enough for her to um, to handle. So let me grab a bowl real quick. You know, and there's some people, they don't even use flour at all. But for me, you know, the flour helps it to stick together. You can also even add just a, a little bit, just a little bit of a bacon, bacon powder in there. But like salt, flour, 
cornmeal is all you need. And of course, some butter. Butter before or after? Butter after. As soon as it comes out, that, as soon as it comes out of that oil, slather it with some butter or your favorite non-dairy spread. Before serving or is after, that a, a, a serving thing? Out. Okay. So that's what you do as the, um, the person who's going to eat it, not the cook. No, I do it as the cook. So by the time everyone, so this is how, how it goes. You make, you, it comes out of the oil. You put it on your, your, your plate with, with your paper towels to sop up any of the, the residue. And then as soon as you take it out, you slather it with that butter. So by the time whoever's gonna eat it, it's already just ready. It's just ready. And so you make these things typically in our household, you make them early. So as everything else is cooking, you know, you make obviously make extra of the hot water cornbread. So as everything else is cooking, somebody wants to come in and you have a little snack beforehand, they can have that. And they don't have to be in your way trying to get the butter out the refrigerator and do all the thing. Just get your cornbread and go. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So um, that water is almost done, but I see a question here. Um, I want to star this. I don't want to forget. Uh, Kathy. Oh, hey, first of all, Hobbs, thanks for coming in. It's good to see you. Uh, we just made Kathy hungry. <laughs> She's craving cabbage now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, this is completely new to me. And, you know, here's a feature that I want in Ecamm. I want to be able to have two different kinds of, um, what do you call it, uh, comments. Because when you're down in my lower left, this is perfectly placed. But when when you're, um, you know. When I'm solo when, dolo. Yeah, when you're solo dolo, those long comments go out into the wind. Or yeah, even like I here, if I pull that up, it's out in the wind, yeah, but it's but, perfect. But, 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 I miss what, what um, Principal Walker was saying. I'm going to learn something tonight. I've heard of hot water cornbread, but have no idea how to make it. Ah, oh, okay then. Okay, yeah, so we're You know, I've also this. wondered if, if hot water cornbread is a regional thing. I was talking to someone in my run group this morning and she was saying like, oh yeah, we make that a lot in Mississippi, you know? Yeah, all right, so that water is done. So I'm gonna jump on this. Real quick here, um, everything is better with butter, absolutely. Uh, Kali, while I'm grabbing the water, Tori would like to know, do you have to cook it in cast iron? And my thought is no, it could be anything. What are your thoughts? Yeah, anything, totally, totally. You want something that's gonna be sure that you are able to conduct a lot of heat with it. But it can be, it can be just whatever fry pan you've got. It, totally, any frying pan will work. So I think this is a little hot. I just measured it at um, at 387, which is is fried chicken temperature. Hey, then that's perfect. Yeah, so it's probably gonna be all right. Um, I just oh pulled it God, down I a little bit. I love that little temperature gauge thing. Oh yeah. Is that like a little gun that you just aimed at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like radar for the kitchen. I love that. OMG. So 409 right now. It went away, but I see it. Oh, there we go. There we go. There it is. Yep. No, I guess it's not going to work now. It wants to point at something legit. It, it, yeah. it got in focus, but I saw that yeah. it was 409 when you first showed it. Okay. So I have dumped the, oops, wrong one. I've dumped the cornmeal in. This is about a quarter cup. Are you saying don't use the whole thing? You said, oh, I thought you said that's a half a cup. It is a quarter cup. Okay, don't use the whole thing. Do Think not. Think about a tablespoon out. Be sure you mix it up real good before you put that water in there. Uh huh. You can put a little bit more than that. Mm hmm. Yep, good. Good. Yep. Yep, leave that to the side. I'm going to get a pinch of sea salt here. And well, you know, I don't know about that pinch. Get like a tablespoon, a teaspoon and a half. Okay. Now I got a lot in there. <laughs> <laughs> I 
There you go. Mix it up real well. So when I first started learning how to make, when I first did this, when I first tried to make this when I was a, a kid, I did not mix it up. And I just put the, the hot water in there. And I was like, why is this not looking like the way mommy makes it? And she's like, oh, because you didn't mix it up first. <laughs> okay, I'm going to grab a spoon real quick. Oh, look, who's prepared? Got one right here. All right, I'm going to let you help me figure out how much when to stop pouring the water in. Okay, so yeah, there you go. That's beautiful. So you're you're pouring the water in as you're stirring it to just see if it's going to form and hold. Yep. As I'm stirring. Ooh, yeah. I think I'm talented, folks. So you know you can pour in a little bit and then stir it. Pour in a little bit and stir. You know your bowl looks a little lightweight, so you're not going to be able to stir it as much. Yeah, there you go. That's it. There you go. Good. Now get it a good stir. See if it starts to form. If it gets too clumpy and lumpy, pour some more water in. Yes, yeah, looking good. Needs more water. Tori, I see that you rebooted and you didn't hear yep. the answer to your question. No, it does not need to be cast iron, but cast iron does hold heat very well. I can't quite see in the bowl, but that is from what I see along the sides, that looks like it may be enough. Give it a really good stir. There's still a lot of dry down at the bottom. Okay, then pour a little bit more water in there. There's a there's a point where you can have too much water and not enough. So you want to make sure that you don't go beyond. But if you do, it's all good. You have a very healthy pantry there. You can make it all good by adding <laughs> a little bit more flour. You're looking really good there. Looks like it may need just a smidge more water. Okay, let's see. That looked like a half a smidge, but that's okay. Better be looking at it. Oh, well. this is looking good. You want it to be like clay. Like yeah. that red clay that we used to give as kids when they wanted us to make whistles when we were kids? Say what? Remember the red clay that we used to get at elementary school and they'd tell you to make a whistle with it or something? I never had that. Oh, it came in these bricks. It was like cellophane wrapped bricks of red clay. You know, the clay that we had was, was sort of like a, a uh, ooh, that's looking like a really great consistency there. All right. That's so looking now, good, Dina. Okay. Now, now can you form one. it into a nice little? Yeah, I can do that. Do you put it on um, a, a plate and then you put it in the oil or do you put it directly into the oil after you form it? I form it and I put it directly into the oil, but I, Whoops. but you should absolutely have a plate with lined with paper towels ready and your butter ready. As a book that just said butter popped on screen. <laughs> yeah, I got my fat yes. finger in it. Yes. I got the butter mm. right here. I'm so ready for right. this. Okay, I'm a little frightened. So I'm going to make sure that dogs are away. Oh, I wish you could see these dogs because they are knocked out. All right. Let's go to the stove, folks. Let's um, go to the stove. Let's get this popping. So, so test the oil. Be sure it's nice and hot. Put a little in there. Make sure it just sizzles a bit. Yeah, that's looking pretty. And I think this will make about six. I, yeah, I think that'll make about, about six. So I was kind of just pre-dividing this. Oh, okay. I'm nervous. Gina, yeah, yeah, that looks good. Now, now yeah, smooth it on out, smooth it out. Yeah, you do it by hand, right? I do it by hand, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So pretty. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Drop them all in just like that. Boom, boom, boom. About how long do these take? I know that they're supposed to be golden and kind of crispy, but yeah, look that's, at the uh, edges. What you does know, it look like? You want them to be golden around the edges. A few minutes. Yep. 
Yeah, you are doing a fabulous job with with the, the whole the way you're forming them. Yes. Now I mentioned that the cornmeal, the the flour, the salt. That's all you need to make hot water cornbread, which is why it's so cheap to make, yet at the same time so delicious. And of course, oil and butter. You know, what you can also do is add a little bit of sugar just to bring out the flavor of the corn a little bit more. You can add a little bit of baking powder to kind of just get it to rise just a little bit. Um, you can also add some onions, scallions in there. You know, if you want to be bougie, you can put a little parsley in there. <laughs> I prefer Perfect. not to be bougie except with my cars. <laughs> and, and that's a that's a joke for sherry <laughs> okay we um we rented a car i think we were in san diego we rented a car and this thing had it, it had lights on the the um the side view mirrors which i know is not a new thing but um when you turn off the car the the side view mirrors would tuck themselves in Oh when yes. When you turn it on, you know it pulled the it, it stuck its wings back out. So I'm thinking, okay, this is a fancy car, right? So I go to the back to open up the hatch, and or you know the back part of the SUV. It was an SUV. Open up the back, and I pull the little lever, and I stand there, and it doesn't do anything. So I pull it again, and then I got to come around and show you my face for this part. I look at Sherry like, and she walks over and she pulls it open instead of me just kind of tapping it. And uh, it opened just fine. I'm like, well, mine, I just got to go like that. And then it Hello. opens, right? <laughs> and she said, that is the bougiest thing I have ever heard you say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it's like when you go into the to those those restrooms where everything is automatic, and then you get to the time where you have to get your paper towels out, and it's like, oh, I have to turn this thing. <laughs> right. It doesn't just come out automatically because I'm here and in need. Okay, now Dina, like, check out check out that uh, cornbread there. It may be ready to turn over. I think it is not. Not yet. Oh yeah, that's ready. That's ready. Turn that mm. over. All right. Absolutely, Dina. Absolutely. Okay. It's just not as golden as I want it to be. It looks brown from here. Um, now, do you flatten yours like I just did? Nope. Oh, okay. Oh, child, yes. Is that brown or is that just, am I seeing things? I think, I think it's not quite time. I'm going to hold on the other ones real quick. Don't let me get away with it for long, but I need to see what's happening over here because y'all are talkity talks tonight, which is great. Okay. Any pan is okay, Tori, correct? Um, yeah. It matches Kali's shirt. I don't know what's matching Kali's shirt. The cornbread? Uh, oh, here's a good one. <laughs> But isn't frying cornbread just a hush puppy? The hush puppy. Maybe I've been down it, south too long. No. Maybe. So, so what do you think the difference long. is? For me, the hush puppy is a different shape. It's smaller, and it's also a little fluffier. So it might have a little bit more baking powder. Oh yeah, the baking powder will do it for sure. All right. Uh, yeah, Doc, I, I would like to know, too, is Baba around? It's good to see you here, by the way. Thanks for coming. Dina? Oh, she played ping pong. It's time. She playing ping pong. What is her ping pong game like? I'm so curious. Um, I hear we she's good. We used to have a ping pong table when we were little. Yeah, it's still, still medium rare looking to me. I'm going to wait. Tina, that is what it needs to look like, I am telling you. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'm listening. Because keep in mind that hot water has already done the cooking. And if okay. you, if you, you want to leave it in there, if you leave it in there too long, it's, it's not going to be, it, it's, it's, when you bite into it, it's not going to be right. Okay, this one is not ready. That one, that one can be, yeah. Yeah, give it a second. All right. 
You know, I'm wearing the, the gold shirt in honor of the cornbread. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I think Doc misses you. <laughs> yes, you do. Now, I've still got a little bit of liquid, not a lot down in here, so there's not a lot Perfect. of pot liquor. Do I need to put a little more um, sure. stock in? Sure, put a little bit more. Just put the rest? Yeah, why not? How much is the rest? Let's see. Yeah. About four put ounces? Rest. Put the rest. You know, the thing about, about the cornbread is that it really goes well. Anything that has a, a gravy, a pot liquor. And uh, for our friends at home, who do not know, would you like to tell them about pot liquor? Well, you know, well, well pot liquor is, is the, 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 the juices from, from all the seasoning and everything that you cook, whether it's like a collard greens or cabbage, mustard greens, anything like that. You know, the gravy, you think of that mainly coming from something you know, that typically goes with the meat, but not necessarily because you can have that coming, you know, you can make a gravy separately. But that pot liquor, and you spell the liquor, you know, whether like liquor, like we think of like alcohol or liquor, like L-I-K-K-E-R, because it's something that's delicious that you just want to lick it all up. Nice, nice. Yeah, the first time I'd ever heard of pot liquor was um, when we were in Atlanta for a show. Um, we went to Mary Max, Miss Mary Max, mm -hmm. I can't remember the proper name, Michelle, correct me. Um, and girl, the number of, the sheer number of sides just made me elated. But, I, um, yeah, the pot liquor was darn good and, um, the catfish was good and the tomato pie and the okra and the, and, and the, and the, and the, and the. <laughs> yeah, that was, um, that's the thing about, about soul food is that it's, it's all about them sides, right? All about them size. Oh, you know, Mary and Max, their macaroni and cheese is pretty good too. And I'm very particular about other people's macaroni and cheese. Like I am about the potato salad, right? So, but theirs is pretty good. Good, good, good. I'm hoping to 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 catch up with you there, Michelle, in in December. All right. So, I think I'm going to bring everybody off now, except this one that I just turned over. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you think? A little bit longer? Uh, from what I can see here, that needs to cook a little bit longer. Yeah, they all need just a skosh. Let's check out the chat. Okay, so Michelle is saying that they call this fry bake in the Caribbean. Mm, yeah. And we've, we've got some hush puppy talk happening. Um, Keely, thank you. Um, time for bed for her. She's been doing some early, early, early hours, um, but she's liking the format. Very cool. Sweet dreams. Um, Yamar Swagu, Dina. That's my baby now that I return it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's just the way it should be with the tailgate. Um, Michelle, is it the same ingredients? I bet she answers that down below. So... Um, you know, and that's one of the things that I really love about food in the African dias diaspora is that you'll find like versions of it throughout, like whether it's, you know, you'll see like a version of this, like in West Africa, East Africa, and then you'll see like how it is even regionally within the United States and throughout the Caribbean and South America, you know, and I call like, like this style of hot water corn, but especially when you put the baking powder in it. I call the that the uh, the California Arkansas, <laughs> you know, because California, like the, the baking powder part is not something that is traditional, but it's something like regionally, you know, you'll start to see people add like different little things, even like adding like the scallions or especially the parsley. That's something that's totally maybe a, a new new thing to add, you know. But the idea with this is that you don't go to the store to buy scallions to make hot water cornbread. You add the scallions if it's something that you have on hand, right? Sure. Sure, that makes sense. And you know, I have to I have to give you some props here. Um, I was telling you earlier. I'll share this with everyone. This is the very first stream, cooking stream, well, stream for me, where I didn't have to go to the store to get an ingredient. 
Yay! This is well. Okay, beautiful. no. Look at those. We did um we did that cooking challenge one time. These look perfect. Dina, look at you. But you all oh. make a better cook, right there. <laughs> yes. Let's come in for a better shot. Yes. I think Collie. You did happy. good. I done good. All right. Yeah, get that so, butter in there quickly. Quickly. Quickly, she says. Um, I'm going to do one thing that's a little bit sacrilege to you, but it's a um, a nod to a friend who is watching. So let me get another plate. Um, do I put this in a bowl or do you eat it in a plate? What do you do? What, I don't know. I can't think about anything else until you get butter in there. Okay. And I'm gonna butter all six of these, seven of them, huh? Uh-huh. So, do I use a butter bell? I'm just gonna make Holly sweat it a little. This is my butter bell. I love my butter bell. <laughs> oh, love that. I Butterful thought this was spice. something you do at serving, not... No, I mean, girl, no. So mama does this, not, not the, the guest. The chef does this because daddy okay. could be making these too. <laughs> well, yeah, okay, you know what I mean. Yes. I don't like to call myself a chef because I am not one. I have not earned those stripes. Okay. All right, there. Now. Okay, the other, you gotta get the other side. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh. yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes. Think exactly, that's exactly how you do it. <laughs> Don't waste butter. The only way you waste butter is by not using it. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> yes. So um, I accidentally fat fingered one of my buttons earlier and you saw that book. Um... Mm hmm This is what and I've been Rich reading. History. That's a great title. It, it, it's really quite good. Um, I'll, I'll try to get over there or maybe you can grab it from, there's a link in um, the description. Um, but what I've really enjoyed about it is she goes through not just the history of butter, but also how the cow goes from this non-fat or extremely low fat thing called grass and turns it into mm. the cream that we turn into butter. So you get science and you get history and I'm sorry, this is still in front of the screen and why is it not going away now? Let me go fix this. <laughs> you know, but what's really cool about that is that to, to even think about that, like you have it's going from grass to butter. Just that, that whole little brain that thought about all of that is so interesting. My, my mother and father, they still have my great grandmother's churn. Oh, wow. I Can remember I say that that cornbread looks perfect. Okay. Well, thank you. It's just perfect. It's just perfect. She says, all right. Um, all right. Now, can you tell me if I'm using a bowl or a plate? And Mary okay, Nicole, what are you talking about? For what? For you in just a moment. Um, for the cornbread, is that what you're talking for, about? For the cornbread and the the cabbage. Oh, you can you can use either one. A, a nice wide bowl works. If you're just having okay. cornbread and cabbage, I would I would use a bowl. If I had okay. like a you know a smothered pork chop, I'd use a plate. Okay. Okay. Um, I gotta do something really special for Mary Nicole real quick though. And I know this isn't how you eat them, Collie, but um, plate. Mm. 
Mm. So, um, she told me weeks ago to buy this, so I'm going to try a little drizzle on it. And then I want to get to the, uh, the cabbage, but it's also extremely hot, so I've turned it off. Now, that was syrup? Yeah, it's called king syrup, and um, that's all I got for you. I don't know. Now, who told you to do this? Mary Nicole. Mary Nicole um, is uh, from Maryland and North Carolina. I have so. never had that. Well, okay, that's good. The cornbread. Mm. <laughs> I gotta get a bowl. <laughs> bowl now. Mmm. That is super duper good. And now, Kali, I get it. Now you get mm. it. Now you get it. I mean, I trusted before, but now I get it. <laughs> hmm. What I don't have is something that'll grab some liquids. Here we go. Boy, all of that rendered down to almost nothing still. Yeah. The um, the juices, I mean. Mm -hmm. That stock I put in, there's hardly any now, left. Now, what you can do is, is uh, well, you're doing it great, actually. No, tell me. No. It, as, you, as you're using a bowl, you, you put the, uh, no, you, you, never mind. That looks delicious. Where'd my fork go? So good. All right, so I'm going to take my. Mm -hmm. here. Yep. Get it deep in there a little bit, deep it in there. Do I that break is beautiful. it? Do I break it in half now, and get uh, it in there? There, just... there is a, a, a cornbread sweet and a cornbread savory. So I have to say, like that, that syrup and that cornbread, that's not my jam. <laughs> so maybe they do that in, in other parts. I, I keep mine savory. That looks so good. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Cornbread and cabbage, the dynamic duo. Ooh, this is hot. And I love it doesn't get all soft. I mean, it's been down in here. Let's see if I can get this shot. Probably can't. It's been down in this liquid. And it's still crunchy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I caught it too late, but I was going to say you put the cornbread in the bowl first. Mm. And then, mm-hmm. Look at that. So you're saying take one mm -hmm. of these guys that's not done. You get it like that? Yeah. Okay. Nice. And then you kind of take bitesy bitesy like this then? Yeah. Or, you know, you can, of course, like with the cornbread, having the, the pot liquor is cool, but you can also just eat that thing solo dolo. Mm. Yeah, love that. Look at that. We're all sold. You know, my, so my father is, you know, of the, the school that anytime you have any, that cornbread goes with every single thing, like cornbread with greens, cornbread with the smothered pork chops, cornbread with the this, like cornbread goes with everything. I remember my, my mother used to say when they first got married that 
my father would, like she would make a meal and he was like, okay, so where's the cornbread? <laughs> so where's the cornbread? Where's the cornbread? <laughs> so it is a staple. Mm. Mm. Dude, this is good. Kathy says she had a, uh, she's talking pot liquor. I had an uncle that would drink it up like real liquor. <laughs> Mm. Oh man. I wish we good. had a way for us both to be doing comments because my hands are full here. <laughs> I know. I was thinking the same thing. Like, how could I bring up the comments on this? I don't know. Uh, okay, so Sherry said pinto beans and cornbread. That's a Where, really okay. great combination right there. How far down are what man? She's the, the talking most going on. Recent comment. Pinto beans, black eyed peas and cornbread, green beans and cornbread. Red beans and rice and cornbread. Cornbread goes with everything. <laughs> okay. Um uh, <laughs> Doc. Why she gotta bring up the smothered pork chops? Damn. Oh, the smothered <laughs> mm -hmm. pork chops. Okay, I think uh, Mary saw the uh, the the king syrup. And Doc says he does not like um, king syrup. He thinks it's a Maryland thing for sure. As a kid, Rockville, it was every freaking day. Rockville. Okay. 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 Mary Nicole and Doc have something in common there. Let's put, there we go. Doc is 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 the link. He's the link to every. He's like the center of the universe. To everything and everybody. You know, some people mm -hmm. say like, "Oh, we're all you know six degrees of separation from everyone," but Doc is like two. Yeah. This is so good, Kali. I cannot thank you enough. I am for so glad you this. like it. I am going to be making some hot water cornbread. I have some cabbage in the refrigerator right now that I've already made. All it needs is some hot water cornbread to go with it. Y'all, I'm telling you, add some hot water cornbread to your life. You will be forever changed for the better. Oh, this is good. Sop yeah, it up. So easy. Sop it up. Sop it up, she says. I'm sopping. I'm sopping. This is, and you know, this one, you saw me put it under here. And it's still holding itself together nicely. I love this. Mm -hmm. It's sopping up, but it's not falling apart. Yeah. You know, how water corn, but it's, it's, it's a hand food, you know? It, it doubles as a hand food and then something that you can stick in with, with something else. So when you have something with a really good gravy, oh. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see that. Uh, Mary Nicole likes it both ways, sweet and, and savory. We got Doc jewelry, drooling. Mm. Yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting because there was a long time, I did not know that people had like sweet cornbread. I went to, I, can't, I think I was at a, a friend of mine's house. I can't remember, I think her people were from Mississippi. And, you know, we sat down to eat and I was excited about eating the cornbread. And I was like, what the heck is this? You know, so I was like, oh, okay. And then started to learn like, oh, there's a sweet crew of folks and there's a savory crew of folks. Same thing with rice. I'm all about mm -hmm. that savory rice. Oh, sorry, Doc. You're supposed to be editing a podcast. Sorry. Not sorry. Cornbread <laughs> Earl and me. <laughs> um, thank you, Mary. It tastes fantastic. I'm super excited about this. Uh, Sherry, Michael, uh, you know where I am and you know how much cabbage I have on the stove right now. Um, it seems like a shame to not just eat this while it's nice and fresh. So um, if I hear some rocks going, or tires going across the gravel, I know it's you. Can you pull up that comment about Nutella that Doc just threw in the chat? I'm assuming you're probably eating right now. So pardon me as I talk no, about No, I'm trying to, trying to get us back. Here we go. It, how far down are we? Cornbread and Nutella. Chili and cornbread. Mm -hmm. Now that is interesting. 
now that you mentioned chili and cornbread, and I forgot about this, I don't mind a sweet cornbread with chili. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can do a sweet cornbread with chili. Yeah, cornbread and Nutella, I've never had that, and I'm not sure if you're kidding. <laughs> I mean, let's just face it. Cornbread isn't bad, and Nutella isn't bad. So putting the two together, mm, you know. Mm. Sorry, Michelle, I didn't mean to make you hangry. Yeah, Dina, we, we've got to do something with the, the taste of vision or something or something, because you are really like chowing down right now. And I'm thinking, I must go make some hot water cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> well, we I'm serious, um, we Sherry and Michael, I think, I think the counterculture would be pissed off if you didn't come over and represent, but you know, I understand you're busy. Mm. By the way, speaking of the counterculture, how about that discord? Mm. How about that? There you go. There's a discord. Yeah, because then we can go in there and, and uh, squab about sweet or savory cornbread, sweet or savory rice. Yeah, yeah. If you're not in there, mm -hmm. I want to hear what you eat your cornbread with. Jump into the discord, into the into the um, counterculture community. There it is one more time since I uh, don't have a mod available. Oh, maybe Michelle can put it in. Um, Jump in there. Let's let's talk sweet or savory cornbread. I I and, and I want to know what with, people right? eat with, eat it with. You know, I I used to be strictly a, a honey and butter, and then I started doing honey and butter and chili. And then I think if I was to do it right now on camera, it would be honey butter and chili and a lot of cheese and extra cheese and more cheese, more cheese for sure. Mm. <laughs> um, so yeah. Yeah, how else, I mean, when you eat regular cornbread, what do you like it with, Kali? Oh, same thing. It's same thing, no different. You know, whether it's the black eyed peas, I really like it with black eyed peas. I love mm. cornbread with black eyed peas. Whether it's sweet or the, or not sweet, whether it's hot water cornbread or whether it's the baked cornbread, I love, love, love cornbread with black eyed peas. I absolutely love cornbread, any type with collard greens. In fact, I feel like with collard greens, you have to have you have to have a cornbread to go with it. It just feels incomplete without it. That I clearly got from my father. Now, do you think that's a texture thing? Yeah, I think it might be a texture thing. It might really be a texture thing. And then I, yeah, it's a texture thing, the more that I think about it. You know, because the collards, it. and it's kind of the same thing with the cabbage. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, you continue. No, I'm, that was it, go. The, I went to a, so my daughter decided, I'm so glad that she's finally at this place where she, we were, were going to a restaurant that featured a different cuisine, right? And so this past Saturday, we went to an Ethiopian restaurant and we were like thinking about like, you know, how you eat that injera with, you know, the collard greens or whatever. And like, yeah, so they're, they're injera, that's gonna be, that's like our cornbread with the collard greens or our cornbread with the cabbage because the plate had like some collard greens and also had cabbage. So I think it is the texture thing, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think you said that, I think I'm going to, yeah, I'm gonna pop your Discord in there because I wanna talk about cornbread. <laughs> and I wanna know Sherry, what people are eating their cornbread with. Yeah, me too. Well, now I'm really curious because that means I get to go try every combination. Mm-hmm. Sherry, I, um, when I was doing research, um, I read something about corn pone. So what she's saying is, I've heard that sweet corn, it, sweet is cornbread, savory is corn pone, but she doesn't know for sure. Um, one of the, the kind of historic food sites that I went to um, said that this would be considered corn pone. Kali, does that align with your understanding? Nope, not at all. What is corn pone to you? Never heard of that. Mm. And so what I what I do, and I love I love food historians. I think they absolutely one hundred percent have a role. <laughs> but you know, I, I absolutely take if if my mother called it hot water cornbread, and her mother called it that, and her mother did, and her mother did, uh, th that's verifiable cornbread to me. <laughs> now, where is your mother's family from? So we have a long history in Los Angeles. 
specifically and few generations, several generations ago from New Orleans. Okay. Yeah, so how is it, Dina? What do you think? It's kind of terrible. Oh, so you done clean the bowl right on. <laughs> I've been um, now... keeping my I've been fighting myself from licking the edges here live. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, this is really, really good. Um I'm having a hard time even thinking about comments right now because I'm enjoying I really this so much. I wish I could pull those comments up. I know. We need to have a talk, Doc. Ooh, Mary Nicole Meyer said corned beef, cabbage, and mm. cornbread. That's good. Cornbread and beans, says Kevin Cox. Okay, so Rich What did says I beat you to, LBC? Yeah, so Doc's brought up Pine Bluff. And I, I'm saying, like, because I am related to everybody within a baby tail of Pine Bluff, Arkansas. So I am certain that Doc and I are cousins. Yeah, I love that everybody's just chiming in tonight. This is great. I can't keep up. Corn, um, see, cornbread on the bottom, the, chili, cheese, sour cream. Yes, yes, yes. Rich is, Rich is on board with that. I love what Mary Nicole Meyer said right here about cornbread on the bottom. Like you put that on the bottom so it like uh -huh. slops up all of yeah. those juices. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Yeah, I love this. And that that's how I do it. I'll 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 cut my cornbread, you know, <laughs> tops and bottoms, throw that in the bowl and then put the chili on top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Sherry's got to get that more cheese in every time. I love it. Um more cheese. <laughs> yeah, everybody. <laughs> I'm making cornbread. Sweet cornbread for uh, Principal Walker. And love it with fried fish, chilies, and greens and chili. Nice. Nice. Now, Not in now, the same meal. Um, okay. I'm curious. So, like, when we have it, it's so interesting. Like, you take something in a different context and it means it's probably something else. So, like, when we have fried fish with the cornbread, we call those hush puppies because we make them round. Mm -hmm. A little bit more bacon powder, even yeah, a little, little bit more lemonade too. Yeah. Okay. I got to get caught up here. I'm here. I am trying to dish up again. Sorry, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, corned beef, cabbage, and cornbread. Okay, that's one that I've never had. Um, oh, you haven't? That's a good one. Not, I mean, I've not had corned beef with cornbread. Dang. Cornbread and beans, classic in his family growing up. Kevin, yeah, yep. <laughs> Corn pone up. Doc. <laughs> Pine bluff, all right. Michelle's saying that pone is, is West Indian. Mm. And it's made with it's cassava made there. With cassava. There we now, go. I know that they don't make it with cassava in the, the American versions that I've seen. The North American versions, I should say. Uh, I think we should be saying um, drink. The real life pot one. liquor. <laughs> <laughs> Dina was about to show you who. <laughs> Can you maybe, you know what? That might be a good Silver Line Home Place piece of merch. Hmm. <laughs> The pot Who's liquor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Exactly. Cornbread's on the cornbread on the bottom, beans on top. Yep. And add the candied jalapenos. All right, that's where you lost me. <laughs> All right. Now I'm gonna get dish up a little bit more. Um, does anyone have any questions? Comments. I want somebody to start the Discord Candied conversation. Candied jalapenos? I need to know more about this. Did I just see a, a comment that says something about candied jalapenos? Yeah, right there. I never heard of such a creature. Well, we may have to make some together this at the end of the season when I get some jalapenos out the garden. There we go. You might have to have I can't. I don't eat them, but, you know, I could mail them to you. 
jalapenos. All right. All right. Well, Ciao. you know, I, I didn't it. ask you a couple of the key questions, so let's go. Um, let's go. What's your favorite comfort food? Oh, um, PBJ, ice cream, pizza. What kind of pizza? <laughs> the kind of pizza I like is pesto and roasted tomatoes. Okay. I, I could be down with that. Um, ice cream, which one? I like a really good praline and cream. I can support that. And a then really what good, kind of pizza? Okay, wait a minute. No, but my absolute favorite ice cream is peach ice cream. Mm. It's just so hard to find. And I was talking to one of my run buddies today. We're going to go to the farmer's market on Sunday. And I'm looking for peaches so I can make the ice cream, the peach ice cream. You can make yeah. peach ice cream. Gotta make some peach ice cream. I think I need to fly to LA. Um, yeah. Thank you, Mary. Put it, put it in the Discord. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Kevin, he he topped the the chili with the raw diced onion. I can't get behind that myself. It has to be minced, not not diced. I can do minced, hot and ready pizza. Meaning Michelle likes all the pizzas. Um, and then yeah, I was gonna say Doc's number one was PB and J. And um, then he came in at ice cream. So really, though, you too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this this brought us to another. This might have to be the thread for this series. Is two questions: What kind of peanut butter? And what you call kind of jelly? What kind of peanut butter and what type of jelly? Okay, my favorite peanut butter is actually almond butter. <laughs> I like a nice raw almond butter. But if we're okay. talking about old school like peanut butter, it's definitely Skippy. Um, it's definitely Skippy. And I like the real jelly, the real grape jelly. Like Welch's or like fancy? I like Welch's. I like Welch's over Smucker's. But I'll take it's gotta be the clear. It's got to be kind of clear, not, not have a whole bunch of stuff in it. Yeah, jelly it has to be kind of clear. Yeah. Yep. But I, I will do preserves. I will do peach. I, I would do the fancy stuff from Bristol Farms and all that stuff. But like, if you're talking about like, what is my growing up to this day comfort food? It's PBJ. PBJ. Now, since I've you know kind of got a different little palate, then I would do almond butter and you know some other little but things. It's but still PBJ. the same thing for you, right? Same thing. It's the same thing. It yeah. originates from the, the, the Skippy and the Welch's. Yeah. And the Wonder Bread. <laughs> the Wonder Bread, yes. yes. The Wonder Bread. All right, last question for you. you know, let, let, I'm gonna give you one question and then before you answer it, I'm gonna go through these last comments. Um, what is your earliest food memory? Hmm. Like Michelle wants me to make ice cream. Memory. I'm thinking about it as you go through comments, you said, right? Yeah. Kathy um, likes chunky peanut butter and strawberry preserves. Okay. Okay. Look at you. Doc's, if Doc approves of your peanut butter choice and your earliest food memory is? You know, my earliest food memory is kind of a memory. It's only because my mother told me the story so much. She said when I was little that I used to, when I was a baby, that I used to love a toddler, but I used to love scrambled eggs. And she said that I would do this, meaning that I would want her to whip up some scrambled eggs. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that. That's my, that's my first food memory is doing and this. And what was doing this? <laughs> I love that. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. That's fantastic. All right. Um, Kathy's saying. Uh, Smooth peanut butter and jelly with potato chips in the middle. I can get behind that, my friend. Wow. Although, Sweet I like and crunchy. Salty. Mm -hmm. I like it crunchy, Sweet but I can see where having crunchy. the potato chips might satisfy that crunch need. Um, Michelle's having a problem with the Wonder Bread. Um, <laughs> and Mary's saying her comfort food is meatloaf. Meatloaf. All right. 
um, McCutcheon, McCutcheon's black raspberry jelly. Okay, okay. I don't like raspberry. Just can't get behind raspberry. Um, anybody have any questions? Uh, anything to say? You know, the music died. I don't think we ever started music, did we? <laughs> yeah, we had music. And I was going to ask, even say that you should drop your, your playlist because you was playing some jams that I hadn't heard before from you. Um, it's in Epidemic Sound. For those who haven't used Epidemic Sound before, check out the description. There is a link there. But um, I know most of you in here have used it. It is called Cooking Channel. That playlist is called Cooking Channel. Got it. I think I'm just going to copy it in twice so it runs the whole run of show because we're going on, we're creeping up on a buck 40 now. Ooh. Mary Nicole Meyer just mentioned potato bread. That actually is the best bread for the PBJ. Why don't I see this? That is the best bread for the PBJ. Thank you for that. Just the last comment oh, yeah, in the Martin's chat. You know, I, I don't go yeah. through the whole chat. I just go right to the bottom. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to give it up a little bit here. And I've never had this black raspberry. I'm going to copy and I use potato that. bread. That's my bread. I like potato bread. And you know what I really like about potato bread? It lasts longer for some reason. Which probably Does is it? a bad thing, but <laughs> it doesn't yeah, it doesn't that, go moldy on. Uh, I'm sending myself a message. Hmm. All right, folks. Any questions for Kali? Kali, any questions for me? Anything? I'm 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 good. I'm satisfied. I need to go make hmm. some hot water cornbread. Um, I'm good. I'm goody. Thank you, friend, for coming in. I really appreciate it and seriously enjoyed it. And I have three more here to sit and eat all by myself with nobody bugging me. Yeah, we're all jealous of you right now. <laughs> and yes, um, Mary Nicole, you and Doc have bonded. I might drag you into uh, one of his streams on a Saturday afternoon with me, Saturday morning. It's kind of fun. Anyhow, y'all, thank you so much. I appreciate you spending time. Uh, I won't be back next week. It'll be the third, every first and third Thursdays is the new schedule. Unless I get an overwhelming response that says, no, don't do that. And then I'll just do it once a month. No, I'm kidding. Um, Y'all tell me what you think. Uh, jump in the Discord. Love, love, love to interact with you there. Um, let's get it popping. So take care, everybody. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you.